1974. I was very fortunate to uh, discover a partial skeleton, popularly known as Lucy, and she's 3.2 million years old and one of the important fossils in our very ancient ancestry. This area where she was found is known as the Afar region, named after the local uh, tribal people, the Afar people in uh, Ethiopia. It was terra incognita when I began working there in 1972. And at that time, at three million years was a real barrier. Uh, if you look beyond three million years, you'd find literally a handful of fossils. We really didn't know who those very ancient ancestors were. I don't think I really understood the impact it would have. Uh, we, we knew that it was a, a extraordinary find. We're, we're happy when we find, you know, a little piece of jaw or part of a skull or whatever. But here you had parts of a skull, you had a complete lower jaw, you had parts of arms parts of, of, of the rib cage, parts of the backbone, a com fairly complete pelvis, and a tibia or a shin bone. We knew that, that just because it was so complete, it was important, but I didn't realize that it would uh, actually launch a new species uh, until 1978, uh, when it was announced as Australopithecus alfarensis. Here is the, uh, the knee joint I found, and it's identical. This is the bottom end of the thigh bone, and this is the top end of the shin bone. And uh, this is identical to the knees that uh, an orthopedic surgeon puts in as a transplant. And one of the first people I showed this to was an orthopedic surgeon. And he looked at it and he says, well, it's identical to a modern human knee. So that meant certainly that this creature was uh, bipedal, upright walking. There aren't many bipeds on this planet, but certainly with uh, 8 billion of us on the planet, it's been very successful. And all of the hallmarks, all of the anatomy of that bone uh, suggested beyond uh, doubt uh, that that creature was walking upright. So this was a human ancestor. She was given a name, Lucy, as I said. Uh, we were listening to a Beatles tape, The Night of Discovery. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was, was the song playing. And I thought she was a female because she was so small. And so she was reconstructed as being about three and a half feet tall, which was very short. And uh, the question was, was she a child? Well, we know from the lower jaw that the third molars are erupted. Details of the teeth in, in where my finger is pointing, particularly this, what our dentists call the bicuspid, uh, are features. It's oval shape. Uh, it has only a single cusp. Uh, those features are very ape-like, and we've never seen we had never seen that in uh, other uh, jaws of Australopithecus. This is an early uh, reconstruction of her uh, cranium. Uh, we now have complete skulls. All the black here is reconstructed, but it pretty much uh, is identical to uh, the, the more recent discoveries of a male and a female skull. And it's quite uh, ape-like with this very low forehead uh, with a and most obviously is most obvious is this very projecting face. Darwin and Huxley wrote about these things. They suggested that the deeper we go into prehistory, if we indeed did have, as they proposed uh, correctly, a common ancestry with the African apes, uh, we would look more ape-like. So that confirms uh, to a large extent uh, what they were suggesting. Uh, and the fact that they suggested that uh, if they are more ape-like and more similar to the African apes, that the oldest ancestors would in fact be found uh, in Africa. And of course, that's the case.
During um, the first half of the 20th century, there was a major debate among anthropologists as to whether or not we stood up first and then brains grew, or we had larger brains and then moved out of the forest onto the savannas and then began walking upright. Uh, and this shows us very clearly that uh, upright bipedalism, upright walking, precedes brain expansion. And in fact, there are some specimens from Kenya uh, that take us back to six million years, and those leg bones uh, appear to have been from an individual who walked upright. So you had uh, quite a, a long period of upright walking before you had significant brain growth. Not that bigger brains are more intelligent, but certainly with more neural connections and so on, uh, you become a, uh, a more creative species. I didn't know uh, the impact it would have, uh, not just on the science, uh, we've just had a celebration at the Institute of uh, Human Origins where scholars came from around the world and whether they were studying teeth or studying uh, locomotion or studying brain size or whatever, uh, they presented uh, papers uh, showing how that discovery influenced the trajectory of their research. I traveled back to Ethiopia in January to visit uh, research going on uh, at Hadar, where Lucy was found, and we all went and visited uh, the exact spot where I found her on that uh, Sunday morning. And uh, I found her because I looked over my right shoulder and recognized a little bit of arm bone. And I, the thought that went through my mine was, if I'd looked to my left, I would have missed her. And my life would have been incredibly different. 